James, you know, give me a sense of your view of what it means to do good deal making. Well, so when, uh, when Barclay asked me to be in this panel, he said, are big biotechs the better deal makers? I said, oh, this will be great because Genentech's considered a big biotech company. <laughs> and then I looked at the remainder of the people in the panel and said, oh, no, we're the pharma company now. And so the real question is, are you guys any good anymore at doing deals? Um, or were you ever? Or, <laughs> or were we ever? Um, but let me, um, let me answer that question by saying, by first of all, answering the question that the panel has addressed, which is maybe. And the reason I say that is that it really depends on the specifics of the partner you're looking for. And so now if I put myself in the, in the shoes of you out there that are small biotech with a handful of people developing a product, there really are three things that we think about when we think about you uh, and deals. We think about cash, because cash is an important, not only for operating, op operating your company, but also as a strategic asset. And we deal with cash with upfront payments, with milestones, et cetera. We also think about value creation, and the only way, to be honest, you create value in this industry that's lasting is by product success. And so by far, in my opinion, the most important thing about is the company you can do a deal with, whether a big biotech or a pharma company, the better deal maker, is are they the better partner for you with regards to your specific project? Is the company the best one you can think of to get the project to market. Because if it doesn't make it into late stage development and doesn't make it to market, you will never really grow as a company. This is sometimes undervalued in my experience in talking to companies. They pay more attention to the balance sheet issue, which I mentioned at the beginning, than they do to the value creation issue. And I believe personally that that's short-sighted. You need cash, of course, and it will be taken care of, but the most important thing by far is the probability of technical success, or what I call PTS, of getting your product into the marketplace or into late stage development. And that's the main piece of value creation. And then the final piece that we need to consider, and we do this with our partner, is liquidity. Because if you're a privately traded company, or I would argue even a thinly traded public company, there is very little liquidity for your investors. And so the other question is how can you get the, the, uh, the stock in the company to actually be liquid? So we think about those three basic foundations of, of deal structure cash position or balance sheet, value creation or probability of technical success into the market, and third being uh, liquidity. And so the answer, I think, to the question, Barclay, is maybe. If you're building a cancer antibody, I think Genentech's the best company in the world to do a partnership with because we have more experience than any other company in building cancer antibodies. And if you think about the probability of success of your product, if it's that kind of a project, then I think we are the best company to deal with. If on the other hand, you're looking for something that's in metabolism, an area where we don't have as much experience, there may be other companies that would be better for you than Genentech. And we fully admit that. I think it really has to do with the development capabilities of the company you're partnering with. Well, as usual, not very opinionated and certainly not loquacious. So I, 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 I challenge you on two things. First of all, no, I'll lie. I challenge you only because I'm trying to um, mix this up with you. But, but I, I think those are great observations for kind of a big uh, playbook, if you will, for how biotech can go assess partners. And it sounds like what you're saying is, look, deals vary. Here's that deal. Here's another deal it's hard to assess what's a better deal and what's a worse deal other than by really drilling down into the details of what that situation was and you can maybe assess, yeah, this turned out to be much better for this particular biotech or not. But I think your, your recommendation is look for the right partner for your deal. And so I, I, I then ask you in this probability of technical success, is that the only um, kind of criterion, if you will, that a, that a sell-side biotech should be applying to the various different potential partners or their other criteria. And I'll ask this of the other guys, because to me this is, a, this is a very important part of what biotech needs to be doing in assessing how to get a good partner, partnership is who should I be partnering with. But um, as, as I asked you before, and you, I guess, intentionally ignored me then, or maybe you just wanted me to ask again, but isn't the market power, the market access of the particular potential partner valuable, or do you really view technical success as the only criterion? It's, it is, in my opinion, the most important criteria because it's the fastest way to create value for the biotech company. So many biotech companies will never make it 
on their own uh, into the commercial space. They, that will be done either by a partner who does a partnership with them, or even, as was the case with Plexicon and their deal with Roche, they were eventually bought by yet a third party, in this case, Daichi Sankyo. So it's very rare that any of the biotech companies that are in this room today will eventually make it to market on their own. The, the, the history of our industry is one of acquisition and partnering for the commercial aspects of what we do. And then the commercializing of the product is being done by a relatively small number of now big biotech companies and pharma companies. And that's why I emphasize development as the key, because it's for, first of all, it's more proximal, it's what usually we're involved with, and secondly, it is the main part of value creation during the lifespan of the biotech company. Obviously, the ability of the company to market the product is important, deeply important, uh, but I, I put PTS for development over that because it's more proximal, and it's, for the biotech company at least, the vast majority of their value creation near-term value creation to increase the value both either in the public market or possibly as an ac acquisition target. Yeah, I see that. So John, let, let me ask you, how do you look at this problem of assessing whether big biotech, guys like you, are doing the better deals these days compared to pharma? And, and in doing that, tell me kind of how you're thinking personally about doing deals with biotech right now. So. Uh First off, I'll say I completely agree with James. The, the fundamental piece of any deal is to get your project from wherever it is in development through and to the market. I think that's obviously critical. I would also add, though, that once you, you know, start going down a little bit deeper below that, I think you have to look at the individual companies and ask the question, what are you trying to achieve? Value creation is one, but there are other elements to, to deals that you're trying to put in place. So a particular company may want to uh, go into the clinic. They brought an asset to preclinical development. They want to take it into the clinic and kind of forward integrate their, their company. So I think that you have to look and say, what, how are, it, what are all the elements that you're looking to, to create value through? Um, I think from, you know, from our perspective on, on deals, um, I think when I look at Biogen in particular and think, why are they different? I think uh, innovation and, and creativity in, in deal terms is critical. I look out to large pharma and I think they have virtually zero creativity and innovation in the way they go about a deal. So think uh, from the small company side, if we can be a little bit controversial for a minute. Uh, a small company comes to a, a, bio, a big biotech or big pharma and says, uh, here's, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like you to take forward my asset, but I want to go into the clinic and I want to you know, do phase one myself. Um, I would like at some point in time, maybe since it's my product, I would like to have a chance to maybe co-promote it. And you kind of lay out a vision for yourself and you lay out a vision for your company. So that's what you say. What a large pharma hears is, so you want to exclusively license your asset to me, I want to write you a report, I never want to see you again, and I'll send you a check at some point in time along the way. That's, and, and you think, uh, are we operating in, in parallel universes? Uh, and it turns they, out- They don't really do that, do they? Oh, I've had it, I went, as Biogen, we were out in, in a, a certain Asian uh, geography, actually we were in China, we talked to some large pharma, and we went through that whole thing, you know, we want to co-promote with you, and we want, we said exactly that, we want to learn the country. And the guy at the end of the day turns back to me and says, why don't you just exclusively license this to us and don't do anything? I mean, it was hilarious. And, and so that happens even in, in our world as we go out to talk to people. So I think that is a, a fundamental difference. I think that the big biotechs, we all started out as small biotechs. We've walked in your shoes. Um, when I worked in the venture capital, you know, there's nothing for the, to help innovation and creativity in a deal structure than watching your cash balance go down and know that in April, you will be out of money. And you get really creative in, in your deal structuring at, at that point in time. So we know what it's like to be in your shoes. We know what it's like to, to want to, when you finally have something that's of value to a big biotech or a big pharma company, to say, hey, I'd like to get, uh, obviously I want technical success, but I'd like to grow and, and, and you know, bring my company forward a little bit. I think I have a much better chance of doing that with a, bi with a big biotech company than you do with, with large pharma.